he had used to heal the sick and give sight to the blind. These guys had a lot of power to tap into. But they weren't to go out in some conceited power parade. They, Jesus instructed his followers to walk a path of humility, to walk in obedience and, and a dedication. And those are all characteristics of their rabbi, their rabbi Jesus. Jesus sent them out saying, be a reflection of me. I think sometimes we hold off sharing Jesus because we don't think we have enough stuff packed into our spiritual bag of trips. The thing is, Jesus sent his disciples out because, let's see, Jesus sent his disciples out to witness without having anything of their own to fall back on. They're out there hanging on a limb. All they had was God's grace and God's providence. You know what? We should be so lucky to have that experience. <clears throat> we ought to be pushed outside and said, you're on your own, go witness for God. Because you know what? All we'll have to depend on is God and Jesus. What a lesson that would be. What an experience. The thing is, is that we're not going to captivate people with our eloquence, our wisdom, and our own power. It's all Jesus or it's nothing. Yeah. Amen. So on this mission, Jesus' disciples didn't have any outside assurance or insurance that made their journey a safe one. The only credit card that they could pull out of their wallet was the power and the authority of Jesus himself. The same power that Jesus used to release people from the grave and, the, and to calm that stormy sea and to raise somebody from the dead, a deathbed. So the disciples went out on their inaugural mission with Jesus' blessing, but the thing is, is they didn't fully understand that. They found themselves in some impossible situations, just like you and I do. Yeah. We walk into situations and we don't feel prepared, we don't feel we've got enough packed in our spiritual bag of tricks, we think, in other words, we don't think we know the scripture is good enough. No. The thing is, is the odds seem to be stacked against us. Our culture laughs in our face. They think their lives are going just fine. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But all the while, they are sinking deeper and deeper into sarcasm, isolation, guilt, yes. and fear. But see, Jesus' disciples weren't jaded yet. They didn't know enough to be scared. Jesus told them they could do it, and they did it. All kinds of healings and exorcisms took place. It was the power of the divine. The power of the divine worked in them and through them, and these rookie warriors hit the road and made that teaching possible through the Spirit. So Jesus sent his 12 disciples out on their mission with specific directions about what to take and what not to take. He didn't buy them a bus ticket. He didn't even send them out in cars, planes, and trains. Did not give them a donkey to share. They walked, just like everybody else. They walked from village to village. They kicked up dust from city cobblestones and along rugged country roads and farm roads. When someone is walking towards you, somebody you don't know, what's the first thing you do? Step aside or go yes. back or go to the other side. If somebody is walking up to you and you can tell they want to talk to you, what I do is I start assessing the situation. I start reading body language. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you're watching for telltale signs of how confident this person is and what they want to say, or maybe what they want to sell. And, and you're wondering if they're agitated or arrogant. You're wondering if they're meek or calm. And your observation has a lot to do with how willing you are to listen to what they have to say 
and how willing you are to buy into what they have to say. Mm -hmm. So that was true in the first century too. The people in the villages were watching these disciples as they walked up to them. Maybe you grew up with a parent telling you to watch your step. There's a, and there's a the most prominent rabbinical philosopher in Jewish history is a man named Maimonides. And he taught that Hebrew scholars should carry themselves in a certain way. According to Maimonides, a person observing the law of Moses shouldn't stagger or slouch or stumble. A Hebrew scholar should walk sure-footedly, yet keep their head slightly down as though in prayer. And they shouldn't walk too slow or too fast. They just need to keep the practiced pace of prayer. In other words... Jewish person of faith should look like a prayer in motion. When we flew to Israel, there were people praying in motion. Jews will rock sometimes as they pray and get into this cadence. And that is prayer in motion. But we're talking about walking prayer in motion. So Jesus introduced his disciples to a new walk that wasn't a statement about a person's background or their social and personal status. The pathway that Jesus prescribed ignored all the naysayers and the doomsayers. Jesus urges us to embrace and step out in the power and authority of God, who is our creator, provider, protector, savior, and king. Now, the Boy Scout said the Boy Scout motto is, be prepared. Jesus directed to his disciples, the ones of the first century, and to all of us in the 21st century is be committed. Now, I didn't say get committed because people are going to think you're crazy. <laughs> they thought Jesus, Jesus' own family thought he was crazy, right? So people are going to think you're crazy when you fully get committed to walking in this way. Be committed to Jesus Christ and trust in God. Amen. These powers were operating with an immense amount of power and authority. You can too. Amen. All of us have that authority through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Through His stripes we are healed. We are the extension of Jesus' healing power. Amen. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way to walk in the world. Jesus leads us beside still restful waters. Jesus guides us along the paths of righteousness. Even when the root goes through death valley, we are afraid. We have no fear when He is at our side. Amen. Amen. We had a scripture in, in VBS from uh, Psalm 86. Teach me your way, Lord, so that I can walk in your truth. Make my heart focus only on honoring your name. Amen. Be committed to walking in the footsteps of the Master Walk so close to Him that the dust picked up off His feet covers you. Amen. Dare to go out without two tunics. Yes. Dare to take risks for God without relying on extra pocket money. Dare to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ without a sack lunch. Dare to offer the healing power of God without the need for an overstuffed bag of tricks. Yes. Dare to be a reflection of Jesus to a hurting world. Walk the talk that Christ directed for all His disciples. No golden parachutes, just a pair of sandals and a staff. Yes. You don't, I said earlier, we don't walk much anymore. We're not very pedestrian, and frankly, my waistline shows it. <laughs> well, that's right. But the way we walk shows, it reveals a lot about us. There's the athlete's springy step. The runway models saunter, hip-hop glide, and the CEO stride. I talked at the children's sermon earlier at, at the other church. I talked about a guy who I see walking down the street occasionally, and he's got his, his hands in one hand and his phone in the other hand, and he's got his own personal stride. I guarantee he's practiced that in the mirror. It says something about who he is. What does your walk say about who you are? Is 
because every step we take shows something about who we are and whose we are. Watch your step. People are watching your every move. Walk like a disciple. Walk into people's story and connect Jesus' story to their story. Walk without being a poser. Yeah. Walk without fear of failure or rejection. Walk with the humility of amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Walk with this calm conviction that tomorrow is a done deal because the power of the living guide is God is guiding every step you take. Yeah. And most importantly, walk like a prayer in motion. Amen. Now, Jesus gave us a prayer to walk by when he taught what we call the Lord's Prayer in the 17th chapter of John. And the point is, don't just say the prayer, become the prayer. When we live our lives so that we become the Lord's Prayer, when everything we do, our eating, our sleeping, our playing, and our walking becomes a prayer offering to God, then our walk and our talk, our motion and our emotion have become one, and we become the Lord's Prayer. And so I would like us to stand as we are able and to bow our prayer, and bow our heads and, and say this prayer with a rededication of becoming the Lord's Prayer. Pray with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation. But deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. exciting and how fun it is to praise you this week. How to just let loose and, and yell and shout and sing and, and pray and help us to understand that we can do the same thing. That Jesus calls us to have a childlike faith. Help us to be joyful in our walking prayer. Help us to reflect Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Stand together. Oh, you're thirsty. 